effect of federation. Located at the heart of the market of over 300 million consumers, could the is the gateway of West Africa. can do together, we can benefit uh, one another, and that's what Africa wants, that's what Africans want, and I think it is healthy for Europe to relate to Africa in that manner, uh, because in the end, the old relationship is a situation where Africa has been a burden sitting on the shoulders of Europe. When it is like that, the one carrying the burden reaches a point when uh, they feel tired of carrying the burden. They may even uh, drop it. When you drop something, it breaks. So we are saying, no, we don't have to wait until we overburden our partners, and then they have to just offload us and throw us on the ground to break. So there was a very good discussion here in Abidjan uh, between Europe and Africa, and it was a kind of continuation of that discussion in Vienna, Austria, uh, where I came from when I was coming here. And again, the attendance of leaders of our continent and the chairperson of the African Union Commission and uh, myself, and others, especially representing businesses uh, on the African side, as well as Europe, we really had a broad conversation uh, to emphasize that health relationship we have been wanting to forge. Maybe I should stop here for now and we shall continue the conversation. Within our traditions and values, because we had tried everything else and came to nothing. Uh, and this is, by the way, might be similar to what we have across the continent. I think people have tried to experiment many things on us at our expense, and we have accepted, and we've gone along. But when you look at decade after decade, it has more or less come to nothing. In fact, with a quick comparison, if you look at what has happened on other continents, let's say if you look at the Asian part of the world and in other places, when you look 50 years back, you find many African countries were at the same level of development with those countries. But at the same time, when you check today, you find there has been more stagnation on the part of the African continent, and the others have advanced and developed a dozen times and more uh, beyond what they were that time and ahead of Africa. So we, we should always ask ourselves uh, some questions. Say, what, what is it that we keep trying, we keep doing, that uh, the only result we have is stagnation? There must be something wrong. So we will have to try something else. But before we try something else, again, we even uh, have uh, the saying, I'm sure you, know, you have heard of that in, in our own uh, place, because there are cattle keepers, people who keep cattle, they say, before you take your, your herd of cattle to distant places for uh, green pasture, you actually start grazing the cows around your homestead. And then you keep going, but you don't start from so far away and come in reverse. So, we therefore had to check from within our own uh, value system what is it that one which is required to bring our people together, to understand, to work together, and find a solution for the common challenge. Therefore, secondly, there are some of those things in our histories of every country, every people on the, our continent of Africa, that actually worked for them 
in as far as creating cohesion within our societies. At the same time, we have also found and discovered that there are some of the social, in fact, economic activities as of the past that can actually resolve or underlie even, or you can trace a relationship in the modern systems of doing things, what we were doing so many years ago. But because we discarded that and went for something else that was not ours or that we were not even used to or that is just being pushed down our throats, we accepted that and just go. In the end, people have choked. People have got choked under that picture of just taking what is not theirs and applying it to their specific situations that are different from those situations of those people who may cut out to the dictates. So that's what we tried in Rwanda, whether it was reconciling our society, we went to the, for example, when we had so many people killed and so many people who killed, but yet we had to bring the society back together. Now, how do you try hundreds of th thousands of cases against those who were victimized, hundreds of thousands, through the courts of law as we know it, the modern courts of law. You would need uh, hundreds of years to, to finish cases. And you would miss the point of bringing the society together. So that's why we quickly went to the, our old traditional ways of settling disputes in our communities. We, we, we get the elders of a society who have uh, trust of the people they lead, the citizens, coming together with the citizens and hearing the grievances of people in our society. And then they are able to adjudicate over these cases uh, in a very short time. And in fact, it has a tendency, you achieve two things. You see justice being done in a traditional sense, but justice is not done to alienate people, but done to bring them together. And that's what we did, and we really succeeded. Where, uh, in comparison, we had something under the UN, United Nations uh, uh, International Tribunal, to try cases of perpetrators of genocide in Rwanda. In fact, by the time it closed, over a decade, they had tried 62 cases and had spent billions of dollars. For us, we tried uh, hundreds of thousands of cases in mass and uh, we categorized them and uh, finished with that. The few leaders who led others into this crime were targeted and processed through the normal course of law, the mass of people that were used to commit crimes were processed through these traditional courts and we saw everybody, you know, uh, go forward uh, and looking forward for a better future for our country. So, but of course the international community was blaming us for that and they were saying no but uh, this thing Rwandans are doing does not meet international standards and then you ask them what do you mean by international standards international standards have not worked for us we are trying something traditional and it, it is working for us so do you go for something international for the sake of it and abandon what is local, but that gives you results you want. So for us, we had to, even against this tide of blame and so on, we made that choice. So this is just to answer your point, I, I've taken probably a lot, much time, but I meant to say that uh, there are solutions within uh, our own societies every country on our continent and across continent there are things that are similar 
we can uh, apply in, in different situations or there are different but we can learn from each other and it's, it's uh, social, economic, justice situations or it's anything else. Thank you. And for their communities to succeed. So this is what we commonly share in terms of possibilities. So it is a challenge for us and, and to all of us to make sure that we also play our part. Every individual plays their part. You have leaders as we know them, but uh, everyone is, is a leader in their own rights, wherever they are, and, but we have to be decided on. And the, 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 the main drive for me and what should be the main drive, I guess, and we share that in Rwanda broadly, the, the different levels of leadership that we look to, to bring about changes that need to happen in our, in our country. First of all, what is happening in our countries, or what has happened in my own country and continues to happen when you look uh, at poverty, the people are poor, there is this, there is that, you know. That first of all, we should be annoyed by it. Yes, we, we, should, we should just say we don't accept it. Because if you accept that what you deserve is of that low level, then that you will get stuck there. And that's what you will have. But also if you feel you are not satisfied and you don't and you reject being at that low level on everything, then what follows is the energy to get out of that situation and move forward. That's what has driven, as I have seen, well, let me, personally, that's what has driven me. I have been uncomfortable from childhood, <laughs> growing up in a very deprived environment, and I was saying, no, this is not what I deserve. This is not what my family deserves. This is not what anybody's family deserves. So, and therefore, we also say it is possible to change it. Otherwise, how and why has it happened elsewhere? I don't even accept that... Uh, Say when we look at Europe or other developed countries, my question to myself and to my colleagues, and this is a conversation we have every day among ourselves, why? Why is it like that? Why is it that uh, the people of Rwanda will only live and survive because some countries, some people from developed countries uh, decide to be very kind to us and very generous with us and uh, and that's how we see the next morning. First of all, it is unacceptable. That is the starting point. Uh, as self-respecting citizens of this continent, we should reject that. I mean, many of you here in this room, I know you have uh, all kinds of backgrounds. You have... Uh, attended the universities, you have uh, in fact taught in those universities in the developed countries. So it means you have the capacity. But why do you waste it somewhere else and not use it to transform your own country, continent, and uh, make sure that your people get what they deserve? This, this has always been the challenge, but it is a drive. It is a drive that makes people do things that will change their situation. So Africa is no exception. We must challenge ourselves. We must understand that we have the capacities and the possibilities to change our continent, transform our continent, and we deserve as good as any other person. I don't accept that there are people, you know, those who believe in religion, a 
I'm sure that all kinds of religions believe there is some superior power that uh, maybe even uh, created us and put us here. This uh, God that uh, religious people believe in did not uh, create some people and say, well, these will be subservient to others and that they will always say, no, no, no. <laughs> That is the starting point for me, and uh, I, I am always uh, dying to prove that that is the case, that Africa can uh, make a difference for itself. About Rwandans, I'm talking about men and women. When I'm talking about Rwandans, I don't just mean men. Or when we say Africans, we don't mean just men. We mean men and women. So in Rwanda, women constitute 52% of our population. And when I was talking about needing everybody to contribute to the well-being of themselves and the families and the country, it is absolutely stupid for anybody to alienate 52% of the population. It doesn't make sense. So, Therefore, it builds on the simple fact that it is the right of these human beings, all of us, men and women. So women have a right. It's a right. Even when we talk about uh, development or empowering women, sometimes it sounds we are doing them a favor. No, I don't think we are doing anyone a favor. We are just giving them what they deserve. It's their right. That's the number one. Number two, as I said, 52% of the population, like in my country, if I want my country to develop and move fast, I don't start by eliminating 52% of my population. <laughs> but rather, we see how everybody comes in based on their rights to contribute, and so everybody advances. It, that's what underlies our policy, that's what underlies uh, the way we were looking at that. And we've done uh, whatever is possible, and we do it with men uh, and women all together. And women, where we have seen them take responsibility, first of all, we have to educate them. In our own country, we found women were not uh, sufficiently benefiting from education. But education is the background of almost everything because it empowers women to know their rights. And uh, in fact, just one quick example, when uh, people have been trying to deal with the management of uh, population growth in Africa, which has been, uh, like at one point in Rwanda, we had uh, our population growing at 3.2% uh, every year. That was very high. But to manage that properly, we found the best input to a solution has come from women once they have been educated and they understand that they can contribute to the well-being of a society and the country in many other ways than just uh, staying back at home and uh, reproducing children. They, they can do both. They can have the children they can afford to look after, but they can also be able to look after family and the children by being productive in other ways. So that's how the, the whole uh, issue came up. And it's, it's, uh, I'm sure there are many other countries, in, even in our continent, that are, are really doing that. Uh, making an effort to make sure that they raise the level of uh, women empowerment and participation and together men and women advance our social economic transformation. It, it, it's, it's everything we have done in the open. Um, we started by creating, first of all, we did not hide what our problems are. They came out uh, 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 as open as that. The second, we have said we want 
a solution to our problems in even an accountable manner we hold ourselves accountable meaning we have to, had to do many many other things one uh, the process of bringing our country together two making sure we do we we we, we create structures and institutions of accountable government create institutions to take care of that here i wanted to bring out the point for example how we have made sure that it is clear we are not going to accept corruption to be our way of life If corruption will happen in any society including ours we had it we still have it but there must be a clear path of fighting it and making sure that it doesn't affect uh, aspects of uh, sectors of life now having put all these things in place then we said but for development of our country it's it's good to have laws it's good to have you know transparency it's good to have good governance and so on and so forth. but these things alone don't put food on the table of anyone <laughs> food on the table is brought by business entrepreneurship uh, productivity uh, transformation of uh, different industries that actually we now uh, enable people to do whatever they want to do starting with putting the food on the table so we therefore created an environment that is conducive to business if you wanted to bring your money to Rwanda you know what to expect there are no two ways about it yes uh, you you come you know what to expect we show you what to have we ask you if it does that interests you and if you invest with us we first made sure that your money is safe and your returns are safe and that returns are there in actual fact because we want to make a difference going forward but we even um, uh, multiplied that by encouraging working together in our region we have emphasized regional integration we have east african community and we have been central to pushing that one to happen because what does it mean Rwanda alone is uh, now between 12 and 13 million people that's a small market but east african community has 160 170 million people so by investing in rwanda you have access to this bigger market like if you invest in any other country of east africa you still have access to a bigger market than that country's population that's the beauty of uh, integration integration makes everyone bigger than they were than otherwise we all are meaning even some of the biggest countries in our continent alone they are small together we are much bigger <laughs> so we, we are interested in that so because of that emphasis therefore on making sure that one at home we have uh, created predictability created a stable environment the security and fighting corruption and making sure that somebody investing in rwanda so the industries across the board are taking notice they are seeing that those who don't see that for other reasons we have been going to them and say why don't you see this <laughs> so we, we have to do our part to go out there and keep you know opening people's eyes to see that we are worth uh, their investment 
And fortunately, some of these companies or industries you mentioned have responded. Every, every company, every business, every industry is going to be interested. I don't think any business is interested in corruption. Absolutely not. It raises the cost of their doing business for sure. They, 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 they end up sometimes uh, paying for this and getting the business they want, but they don't like it. They just do it because they are forced to do it. If they find a place where that doesn't happen, that is their preference. So we made sure that we make ourselves their preference, at least to this scale that uh, we are able to see today. So we have seriously worked on making it easy for people to invest with us and in us uh, and make it easy. For example, we used to have a company would come to Rwanda from outside and to register a company in Rwanda would take uh, 90 days. Now it takes uh, six hours maximum. Six hours, from 90 days to six hours. So you know, you come in, you do whatever you do, you take your plane and go back, same day. And many other things like that. So the efficiencies that come with it, the transparency, the has really created effectiveness around that. So that's how these companies have come. They have seen what they saw themselves, but we have also gone to them and made them see maybe what they hadn't seen. As we speak, in fact, the last summit of the African Union, we made uh, the theme of the year yeah, fighting corruption. And that's how, uh, in fact, the President uh, Buhari, President of Nigeria, is, uh, was appointed as uh, the champion uh, for this theme of fighting corruption. So we took it at the summit level, the continental level. We have agreed on that. So that means everybody, every country on our continent recognizes that there is a need to fight corruption. And we made it central, the fight was central. The other, which is not a secret, is you just fight it. I'll tell you an example. <laughs> And uh, fighting, fighting corruption should not be selective. Yes, you, you, you don't choose these uh, ordinary people surviving <laughs> and, and you start uh, uh, taking it to them to show that you are fighting corruption. No, you take it to the big guys like me. And, uh, <laughs> 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 so, and uh, in our case, uh, uh, my, my, my colleagues who I came with here, they know it. All of us are not immune to that. If you are caught up, then the law takes care of you. There is no exception, whether you are a general in the army, or the police, or a minister, or in fact, even the president. Uh, and f to demonstrate that, what we have done also, uh, we have an ombudsman. Uh, I think that's a, a word, that, a name that is normally is well known. Every year, we make declarations, starting with the president. In fact, I'm always among the first to put in forms I have filled. They ask me what I own, how I got it. And so I have to keep. And if they find I'm telling lies, they will come for me. And, uh, <laughs> since, and I have no objection to that because uh, I, I was part of those who started it. Yes. And if, for example, what I own, I have made it known. And I own, uh, I'm not uh, the poorest in my country, but I put things there and I tell them how I got them. 
so that is that, and that's not a secret. It's in the open. So I, I would just say this is how we do it. This is the best way we found we can do it. And of course, along the way, there have been a demonstration. We have demonstrated that yes, corruption will be fought because some people have actually been caught up in it. Let me tell you finally something else you need to be careful about. Fighting corruption is not easy at all. In fact, uh, uh, but, and I remember there's a friend of mine, Eric, you know her, uh, Ngozi. Ngozi wrote uh, a book. She sent a copy to me, and the title of it is uh, Fighting Corruption is Dangerous. <laughs> so when I, when, when I met her, I said, you know what? You need to write another book and give it a title that not fighting corruption is even more dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> So it's absolutely very difficult. It's absolutely difficult. It's dangerous, but the alternative is worse. And um, yeah, so that is how we go about it. Thank you, sir. And doing things that not only serve in their countries, but spread across. But at the same time, starting home, uh, being able to start these businesses at home and growing them at home. In fact, uh, as you probably may know, we, we, we are benefiting from uh, foreign direct investments. But at the same time, in fact, they are building on the capacities that have been developing on the ground. In fact, if you come to look at the whole city of Kigali, as you, you know very well, in fact, the biggest chunk of it and the businesses there are Rwandan-owned. So we, 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 we've built this base and there are these champions. Uh, uh, and, and you know also uh, that that relates to something else. When uh, we saw this uh, crisis, global crisis, 2007-8, uh, you know, some of the industries, especially in the financial sector and other places, they started uh, <laughs> going and uh, leaving emptiness behind it. Uh, that didn't happen with us for two reasons. One, maybe there weren't too many of those yet in the country, so we didn't see a lot of them leaving because the only thing they could be doing was to be coming into the country and not leaving because they were not there for many years, so they had just started coming. But the biggest factor was that, that there were these national champions uh, that uh, had invested and continue to invest. Um, in fact, an interplay between the private and the public investment ha has really uh, helped that to happen. So it's, it's something to encourage uh, these national champions is very important because of the obvious reasons and we should do everything working together, especially private, uh, bringing in their money and know-how and passion for their countries, but also government encouraging that, doing its part to encourage that and creating environment for that to happen. Thank you so much, sir. La souveraineté, the royal crown for the responsibility, the wisdom, they share for the authority, the stability, and the good governance. <laughs>